Let's look at the solution to one of the simplest situations involving multiple reactions for which we can get an analytical solution. So here we'll be looking at a set of irreversible first order reactions occurring in a plug flow reactor. So the reactions we can write A going to B going to C where B is our uh, desired product in this case. So the mole balances on each species we can write as the derivative of the molar flow rate of A with respect to volume is equal to the rate of formation of A. So if this reaction is elementary as written, so you can write reaction rate constants for the first and second reactions. And if we assume that the volumetric flow rate in this case is constant, then we can recast our uh, differential equation in terms of concentration and the residence time tau. So let's see how this works. We can rewrite the molar flow rate as the inlet volumetric flow rate, which again is constant throughout the reactor times the concentration of A over dV. And so uh, grouping the volume and volumetric flow rate here, so we can write that the residence time is equal to the reactor volume divided by the uh, inlet volumetric flow rate. So we can rewrite this derivative as dCA d tau, and that's just equal to minus K1, the first reaction rate constant times the concentration of A. So similarly, we can write um, mole balances uh, in terms of concentrations and residence times for B and C. So here dCB d tau is equal to K1CA as the first reaction generates uh, B minus K2CB as that second series reaction uh, depletes B and converts it into C. And finally, we can write the mole balance for our species C in this case is just the formation from that second reaction. So you'll notice that these are very similar to mole balances for a constant volume batch reactor uh, with the resonance time taking the place of the reaction time t. So in this scenario, let's assume that our feed is pure A to the reactor with a concentration of Ca0. And so there's no B or C in the feed. So given this initial condition, we can solve the mole balance for um, A to get a concentration profile with respect to residence time. So our mole balance for A is a separable, separable uh, differential equation. So we can write that dCA over CA, which we'll integrate from um, the initial concentration at the reactor inlet to some arbitrary point is equal to the integral of minus k d tau from zero to tau. So this gives us a concentration profile for Ca. It's equal to Ca naught, the initial concentration times the exponential of minus k1 times tau. And this should be k1. Okay. So we can input this expression into our other mole balances for B and C. So let's do this first for B. We can write that dCB d tau is equal to K1 CA, which we will replace with our expression here. So this will be CA naught times e to the minus K1 tau minus K2 CB. So this is a linear first order ordinary differential equation, uh, which we can solve using an integrating factor. So you may remember that if we have a differential equation of the form dy dx plus some function of x, p of x times y being equal to q of x, so this is what's called a, a linear first order ordinary differential equation. The solution to this differential equation is y of x, it's the function that we're looking for, is equal to one over 
this function mu of x, which we'll define in just a moment, times y naught plus the integral from x naught to x of mu of x times q of x. Okay, so this is given some initial condition that y equals y naught when x equals x naught. And here, this function mu is what we call the integrating factor. So mu of x is the integrating factor. And it's equal to, mu of x is equal to exponential of the integral from x naught to x of p of x dx. So in this problem, our integrating factor, we can write as mu of x is just going to be equal to e to the integral from zero to tau. So here tau is our independent variable. And it's going to just be equal to k2 p of x, in this case, d tau. And so we can write that the, our integrating factor is just e to the k2 times tau. Okay. So using this solution for a first order linear uh, ordinary differential equation, uh, we can apply this to our mole balance on B to find the concentration of B. So again, it's going to be equal to, the concentration of B is gonna be equal to one over our integrating factor, e to the k2 times tau, times y naught, so in this case it's gonna be uh, Cb uh, at a time or at a residence time of tau equal to zero. It's going to be CB naught. And we uh, mentioned in this case that uh, CB naught was zero. We were not feeding any B to the reactor. So this is just going to be zero. And then we have this uh, term that's an integral from zero to tau uh, over d tau. And this is going to be the product of our integrating factor e to the k2 tau times our function uh, q of x. So this is going to be k1 times ca0 times e to the minus k1 tau d tau. Okay, so we can rearrange things uh, a little bit here. So we'll pull all of our constants out of this expression. So this is just going to be k1 times ca0 times e to the minus k2 times tau. And then our integral, again, from zero to tau. The um, argument of this integral is just gonna be now e to the k2 minus k1 times tau d tau. So if we carry out this integration, we can write that this is equal to CA naught times K1 over K2 minus K1 times E to the minus K2 times tau. And then we have this term E to the K2 minus K1 tau, which we need to evaluate at uh, the two limits of integration, so tau and zero. So this is just gonna be all this stuff out front again. Times e to the k2 minus k1 times tau minus one. Okay, so we can Finally, write the concentration of B with respect to tau. So it's gonna be equal to the inlet concentration of A going into the reactor times K1 over K2 minus K1 times E to the minus K1 tau minus E to the minus K2 times tau. So that's gonna be our concentration profile of B.
with respect to tau or position in the reactor. So we could plug into the mole balances for C and get a separable differential equation to integrate, but we don't need to do this because by stoichiometry, we can just write that CA naught minus CA. So basically how much the concentration of A has changed by reaction is equal to CB plus CC. So if A has been reacted away, it has to be accounted for by a formation of either B or C. So doing that, we can write a concentration profile for C. So that would be CC. So again, this is gonna be a, a function of tau is going to be equal to CA naught times one minus K2 over K2 minus K1 times e to the minus k1 times tau plus k1 over k2 minus k1 times e to the minus k2 times tau. So this would be our concentration profile for C. So what do these concentration profiles look like? So we can sketch these out. So we'll look at two situations here. So in this case, we'll have K1 being approximately equal to K2. And then we'll look at the situation where K2 is much, much larger than K1. So the second reaction uh, occurs much more quickly than the first. So here what I'm plotting is uh, the concentration of each species normalized to the inlet concentration of A versus K1 tau. So a dimensionless variable that tracks the progress of the reaction. So what's this gonna look like? So a is going to monotonically uh, decrease with position in the reactor. So the concentration of B is initially going to climb as A is reacted to form B, but then it's going to decrease uh, as B is um, converted into C in this series reaction. So the concentration profile of C is finally gonna look something like this where we have a slow rate of increase of C initially as there's very little B in the reactor, but then um, it's gonna go through an inflection point and uh, eventually be the dominant species. So what happens if the uh, rate of the second reaction is much, much uh, more rapid than the first? So things are not gonna look very different for A. So this is gonna be the concentration profile of A. And C is eventually going to be, again, the dominant species in the reactor. But the concentration profile for B, while it have, will have a similar shape where it'll go through a maximum, the height of this maximum is gonna be much smaller, so we'll never have very much B uh, present in the reactor as it will very quickly uh, react to form C as soon as it's formed. And the position in terms of residence time uh, of this uh, maximum is going to be uh, much smaller than it was when the rate constants were similar. So what this uh, begins to look like is essentially the reaction system where A is directly reacting to form C and you're not really uh, seeing the presence of B very much. So if B is our desired product, we can use our solved, solved mole balances or concentration profiles to determine how we can maximize the yield of this product. So the maximum in concentration of B occurs when dCB d tau is equal to zero. So this is this position here where the concentration of B is going through a maximum with respect to tau. So we can find this uh, residence time tau by taking the derivative of our concentration profile of B with respect to tau. So that's going to be equal to CA naught times K1 over K2 minus K1 times this expression minus K1. So this will drop out of that um, exponential term when we take the derivative minus K1 tau will be plus K2 e to the minus K2 times tau. Now we can solve this expression uh, for tau to get the uh, residence time at which the concentration of B is maximized. So solving for tau equal to this tau maximum, 
can write that the residence time at which B is maximized is going to be the natural log of K2 divided by K1 divided by K2 minus K1. So this tells us the residence times that we need to operate at to maximize the concentration of B. So note that for a batch reactor, this expression would be identical. So T max would be equal to natural log of K2 over K1 divided by K2 minus K1, where here now we've just replaced the residence time for our continuous reactor with the reaction time for our batch reactor. So the yield at this point, you can write the yield of B being equal to the concentration of B at tau equals tau max divided by the concentration of A fed to the reactor. So this is how much B we've produced for how much A we put in. So this is going to be equal to CA naught divided by CA naught times K2, K1 over K2 raised to the power of K2 over K2 minus K1. So our maximum yield of B, we can write in terms of our rate constants. So this is gonna depend on quick, how quickly we form uh, B from A and how quickly that B is reacted away to form C. So it's gonna be K1 divided by K2 raised to this power of K2 divided by K2 minus K1. Okay, so that showed uh, how for a system involving multiple reactions, here series reactions uh, in a plug flow reactor, uh, we're able to uh, solve these uh, mole balances and differential equations analytically uh, to get expressions for our concentration profiles and the conditions under which we maximize the selectivity and yield to our desired product.